Pro Extra is the Home Depot's free loyalty program built for pros. Members earn perks just for shopping, like new Pro Extra dollars or tool rental perks. Get exclusive benefits every day that save time and money. And here's an extra extra, $20 off your next in-store purchase of $200 or more just for signing up. Want to save? Join Pro Extra only at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. Visit the Pro Desk in store at homedepot.com slash pro extra for details. Pro Extra is the Home Depot's free loyalty program built for pros. Members earn perks just for shopping, like new Pro Extra dollars or tool rental perks. Get exclusive benefits every day that save time and money. And here's an extra extra, $20 off your next in-store purchase of $200 or more just for signing up. Want to save? Join Pro Extra only at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. Visit the Pro Desk in store at homedepot.com slash pro extra for details. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Christopher Media, let's make some noise. Welcome to Beer Nuts, a weekly excursion into the world of craft beer. Brought to you by MichiganBeerGuide.com. And now, here are the Beer Nuts. Welcome to Beer Nuts number 88. I'm Chris. And with me from MichiganBeerGuide.com is JR. Yo, cuz. We got Uncle Pete. Hey, beer time. We got Lieutenant Dang. Happy Beer 30. And Greg is with us again. What's going on, everybody? Full House, we're all in different spots uh, for another, I believe, double IPA episode. Is that correct? This isn't our first one of these, is it? Probably not, but we love double IPAs, and it's been a while, so that's what we're doing. Because it's our show, and we'll do what we want, right? Amen. Yes. And I think our listeners probably love double IPAs, too. Who doesn't? So, uh, at this time, don't like it. Uh, as long as we're talking about our listeners, let's invite everybody to crack open a cold one, whatever you're drinking. Hopefully you have a double IPA. If, if not, drink whatever you enjoy, because we're not pretentious. So, you want to crack open anything from a Coors Light to a Hill Farmstead, uh, Arthur, uh, there's room at our table for you. So, all righty then. Uh, let's see, I guess we have a brief quote here. We're going to keep it short and sweet today, and I'm going to deliver a quote, and this week's beer quote is simply, I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. <laughs> That's attributed to Dorothy Parker, but I've heard that a lot of places. Who's so, Dorothy Parker? <laughs> I have no idea, she would, but I know what a frontal lobotomy is. Was she the nurse that yeah. one flew over to Cuckoo's Nest? <laughs> Possibly. Be. Maybe she had a frontal lobotomy. Who knows? But I would definitely rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal little bottle. So speaking of a bottle, I'm thirsty and uh, we got a little bit of a late start tonight. So Uncle Pete and I have already been uh, sampling our first beer and uh, I was fortunate enough I was in uh, actually in Chris's home neck of the woods even though he's in Oregon right now. Uh, I was up in Rochester, Michigan today and I went to a uh, really fine liquor store in the area uh, called Zatuna Liquor. Jack Zatuna, the owner, uh, recommended when I told him we were doing a double IPA, recommended a great Michigan beer from uh, Witch is Hat Brewing in South Lyon, Michigan. So uh, he uh, convinced me to purchase a Howler, 32 ounce serving of this guy, double IPA from Witch is Hat. So it's a double IPA at 8%, and it's a New England-style IPA. It's got that hazy look. So I'm going to uh, pour some more in my glass, and we'll review it here. Pete and I both have some. So we're doing a pretty good job in this 32 ounce. However, the first thing I want to say about the beer is it, it pours in, you know, just like you would expect a New England IPA, nice uh, golden hazy color with a really nice, uh, solid, bright white head. Uh, Probably about two fingers when we first poured it out of the towler. Uh, uh, so uh, really healthy carbonation, uh, hazy, cannot s- see through it because of the haze, but it's uh, got a really nice, pleasant, light, light straw, golden color. Um, and as soon as I opened it, I could uh, get a really nice, strong aroma of that uh, juicy, citrusy, tropical, tropical fruit uh, aroma from the hops. So... 
Let's uh, take a sip of this. And the first thing I want to say is, usually with a double IPA, this is, I would never guess this would be. This tastes almost like a session IPA. It really hides the strength of it well. Um, does not drink like an eight percenter, which is probably why we're almost through the entire thirty-two ounces of it because it's really easy to drink. This one will sneak up on you. Very, very uh, smooth, uh, pleasant. Uh, not too bitter. Not too sweet. Uh, definitely getting uh, like mango, tangerine, citrus, uh, like a little bit of fruit juiciness. The mouthfeel on it's nice and creamy. It's really a very easy to drink beer. It's very pleasant. Um, I can see people uh, that don't care for IPAs, like Chris at one time you were. I can see this being an easy gateway uh, because it's really not overly bitter or... Uh, so somebody that maybe doesn't typically order an IPA, uh, I would encourage you to have them taste this because it's, it's very drinkable. Um, it's got that strong 8%, but it hides it well, and it's, it's really a lovely beer. I uh, really want to thank Jack at Zatuna Liquor for uh, recommending this. I had never had it, and it's, it's a winner. What do you think, Pete? What do you Yeah, that's right on. I mean, uh, this is a great representation right in the middle of the pack with this New England-style IPA. Out of all the New England styles we've tried in the past and talked about, I mean, in a, in a blind taste test, certainly I could easily pick this out as a New England style IPA. It's, it's spot on. Um, you take the blinders off, and like you said, it's nice and hazy. But just the aromas and the flavors and the juiciness, it's it's very pleasing. And uh, I'm enjoying my second snifter full already. So it does hide the ABV well. And uh, nothing wrong with that. There is no bite or burn to this at all. It's just uh, real easy drinking, very flavorful. It's a solid, solid beer. Very impressive. So, thanks, Jack, for the recommendation. We're really enjoying this one. Has anyone else had this? Greg, have you had it? Yeah, I have. It's it's been a couple of years, but uh, I, I first tried it out at the brewery there uh, in South Lyon, and really enjoyed it. And then. You know, found out they were they were bottling it and brought home a couple. Uh, I think it was four packs or six packs. I don't remember now, but uh, I it just like you, everything you you said. It was uh, typical New England, just perfect. Everything hid well alcohol wise and really juicy. And um, yeah, kind of jealous you got it, got it for yourselves. And hopefully, uh, I can pick up some here uh, shortly. So yeah, really good good offering from them. So. What brewery is this again? Which is Hat Hat Brewery? South Lionel. And uh, if you're around on St. Patrick's Day, they have a big bash over here for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, I haven't made it. St. Patrick's Day is on a Saturday this year. And I have a meeting out that way, an umpire meeting, an umpire softball inside. And it's at 9 a.m., so I think right after the umpire meeting, I'm just going to cruise on up the rest of the way to South Lion and... Uh, check out the St. Patrick's Day Bash at least early before it gets crazy. You don't think people will be trying to take work off Friday, too, to get a jump on the St. Patrick's Day? <laughs> I'd say they will. <laughs> I was, I was uh, very well, maybe. Oh, oh it's on a Irish Saturday. Irish. My wife will be working because she works at Irish Pub. Oh, oh boy. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> well, somebody's got to say it about this beer. Uh, I really like this guy. <laughs> yeah, this guy. All right, Pete, well, as long as you're talking, why don't you take her away? We're going to go into your beer, and uh, I think it's a beer that most people have heard of or tried. Uh, tell us about your beer. All righty then. So every January, everybody gets looking forward to uh, Bell's Hop Slam, and it comes in that hop green can with uh, great big hops on the front. And, uh, you know, I got to just say, you know, there's a lot of people that say, oh, this beer is overhyped, overhyped. Oh, yeah, it's hyped. It's once a year in January, right about the time you got through the holidays and everybody's bloated from all the stouts and stuff they've been drinking and time to turn the corner and start getting thinking about spring. Well, this beer, I can't wait to drink it. I, I mean, I've had a few already of, of this particular uh, vintage from 2018, but I'm going to just kind of start fresh here, open a fresh can. This is a 10% ABV double IPA, and I have found in my experience over the past several... Oops, sorry, JR, I didn't read you much. <laughs> There's another one. Uh, 
I wasn't even thinking, JR. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, cheers. Oh, you want me to give you some? Okay. There you go. All right, that's a little good. transfer. Did All you right. spill a drop? Pete was. <laughs> Pete must really like this one. He poured almost the whole can. Yeah. Gave me like one finger full. <laughs> I made him give me some more. Go ahead, Pete. Okay. It was just totally, I didn't even think about it, JR. My bad. Uh, anyways, yeah, so I have found differences year to year in years past, right? And I think a lot of others who have had this every year will find, yeah, that one year was, you know, really uh, strong uh, alcohol flavor. One year was maybe too much honey. One year, you know, it was too hoppy, whatever. Um, we'll see what this one looks like. Uh, according to their site, uh, they use six different hop varieties uh, in the brew kettle. And then uh, they do dry hop uh, with tons of Simcoe. So uh, Simcoe, you know, there's a lot of beers out there that have Simcoe uh, influence on them. And, uh, you know, I look forward to, to Simcoe to getting... Uh, you know, some of the grapefruit rind and, and the pine and, and uh, you know, those kind of uh, influences. Um, it's very typical of a West Coast IPA. So I'm going to take a look at it. Really nice, solid uh, amber color. Very deep, deep uh, gold and amber color. Nice bright white head on it. Very aromatic. Oh, it's just a pleasure to sit here and smell it. It's like fresh hops. It gets, you know, hop slam. It's slammed with hops, definitely. Mm. This is the, we've chilled this down and got it really nice and cold. And, uh, boy, it's a full-bodied, um, very tasty beer. Uh, sweet. The honey is definitely influencing it, but I wouldn't say in an overpowering way. Um very fresh and green on the hops. It's like really like uh, you just got it out of the brew kettle. Uh, very, you know, the bitterness is very uh, grapefruit-like. Um, it's very, very uh, long-lasting on my tongue. And I find that overall, if I take another sip here, mm, in my view, this year's, it just seems very well put together where everything comes through, but nothing is kind of overshadowing anything else. So the malt backbone is there, uh, the hops, the bitterness is there, the flavor is there, uh, the honey comes through, and it's all really nice. It's not like uh, a mix mash or anything like that. And for a 10% alcohol beer, I'm not really getting a hot a hotness whatsoever. Um, but I'm sure after I drank two of them, let's say, I probably feel it pretty warm. Um, but no, great double IPA. Look forward to it every year. Um, it's something that you're going to want to drink fresh, as fresh as possible, in my view. Um, certainly, if I do, we do have a vertical here, don't we, JR? We got a 17 we can taste next to it. Yep. I actually found four cans of last year's in my cellar. I don't know what happened. I kind of neglected them, but. So we have one that I chilled down that we're going to taste, and it's always an interesting. A lot of people say, oh, you know, if you don't drink them fresh, they're no good. Other people say they turn into barley wines. But we figured it would be fun just to taste yeah. last year's against this year's to see what that one year does. So we're going to crack that open. Before we do that, I just want to add my two cents on this. Um, I, I wasn't nearly as impressed with last year's, uh, which is probably why I still had four cans left, I remember. But this... This year's vintage uh, tastes much improved, I think. I, I really, particularly in particular, really like the mouthfeel. Uh, it's got that like resiny, uh, sticky mouthfeel to it, um, and a nice, you know, piney, grapefruity uh, hop profile, uh, and a little sweetness from the honey and a lot of malt. There's just a lot of everything. It's a pretty full mouthfeel, uh, you know, a lot of malt and a lot of hops and. It's really, really enjoyable. I was really impressed. I uh, uh, tried some the other day for the first time this year that Pete had. I'm like, wow, this is good. So glad, uh, glad we tried it. So now we're going to try uh, last year's and see what one year of aging has done to this. Yeah, while you're opening that, JR, just add 
uh, is kind of a lot of calories too. You say it's a lot of everything. Well, it's about 300 calories per can. So if you were to down a six pack, of course you'd be floating up in the clouds somewhere, but the uh, calories are going to weigh you back down and <laughs> keep you planted on terra firma. All right. So we have a uh, 17 and I'll right. hold it up. It's definitely looks a little lighter. And I don't know if that's from the age or if it's just maybe last year's was different. Yeah, it does look lighter. Uh, it's a definitely a shade lighter than uh, you know the amber color that the current year is closer to. It's still a lot of, uh, not nearly as dark. Uh, it's still got you know plenty of uh, carbonation, so it hasn't gone flat over a year. Um, right away, you can tell on those that you know it doesn't have nearly that that hop hop bomb. Uh, Punch you in the mouth, hot aroma. Yeah, it's a lot different. Yep. Uh, not sure how to describe it, but the hops definitely faded. Um, that's kind of almost remind me like if a dogfish had one twenty or you know something like that. Yeah. Been, but still has a resiny barley wine, but still has a resiny, sticky sweetness to it. But the the hop uh, influence has dropped off compared to this one of uh, eighteen. So it stands to reason, but. Uh, it's a drinker. I I drink it. Yeah, it's actually it's a lot better than I thought it would be. It's definitely much different than it was fresh, obviously. But I, I would say, uh, if anything, it's it's the sweetness comes with the malt and the sweetness are still there, whereas the hops have faded, so it's less bitter. Yeah. But actually, after a couple of sips, I'm like, oh, this isn't too bad. Well, it comes in the twelve ounce cans. I think last year also came in the mini kegs, right? The five liter. For the last couple of years, I think last year they did not have the mini keg, and this not. year they brought it back. Yeah, that's right. Um, and you can get it on tap. I know I watched a video on the Bell's uh, website recently that talked about Hop Slam. The guy was saying it's been described as uh, your cat ate a bag of weed and uh, pissed on the Christmas tree, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to tell you now. I really Way to sell it. A couple of I thought I was going to take a couple of sips of this, like one from last year and one of drain for it, and I'm I'm kind of enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. it was a really fun actually to to taste the difference, but they're both drinkable. I was surprised, but I just thought after a year it would be not even worth keeping, and that that's not correct. If if I had my preference, I'd certainly go with the fresh. I mean, that's just oh, absolutely, my preference. no question. But it's not it's not uh, something you should throw away if you have old ones. So, uh, you know, hey, if you got a couple, save one for next year and try this experiment yourself. What do you got to lose? I got three more cans, so maybe I'll save each year. I'll break one of those out and see how it yeah. rains through the years. Yeah, could do that. You know, I was happy this year to get, you know, three or four, uh, six packs of this. and They're about gone. I think I got one more left at home. But well, I can it see was why. Been good, it's been a good January, February, you know. But All right. beer, Bells. Keep it up. Anybody else have any comment on this beer before we move on? I think I think you guys nailed it on the head. They 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 certainly balanced it well this year compared to other years, and it's been very enjoyable. I've bought myself a six pack and been slowly enjoying them. So uh, another great job by Bells. Yeah, and uh, the other thing is, it's great to have somebody say that this year's is better than last year's. Because usually the standard answer is, oh, this is good, but it's nowhere near as good as last year. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's good to see it going the other way for once. I know you all know what I'm talking about. Right. All right. Well, uh, Greg, uh, why don't you take us to East Lansing, home of your beloved Spartans, and let us know about your, your beer from there. Yes, sir. Mine's, uh, mine's from Ellison Brewing Company, like you said, in East Lansing, Michigan. Um this is their 9% double IPA called You Can Get With That Juice. Uh, it's my first time uh, having this beer. I just picked it up uh, not too long ago at 8 Degrees Play-Doh in Ferndale. Um, very nice offering from, from them. It pours a very uh, orange, medium orange color into the glass here. I got my Michigan Beer Guy glass that I won uh, not too long ago from you guys. So... Sitting in the glass here, poured out, finger ahead, which dissipated pretty quickly. A little bit of lacing on the glass left over. Uh, the aroma that comes through here is uh, 
uh, very citrus, lots of uh, like tangerines, um, mango, you know, what you expect out of a, an IPA, double IPA now from like a New England style uh, flavor here as I take a sip. Mm. More of the same, you know, nice citrus bite to it, um, nice bready maltiness to go along with it. A um, little bite from the hops uh, that just lingers a little bit, but doesn't uh, overpower it. Um, yeah, very earthy. Um, it just it lingers nicely in the palate here. It's it's very similar to, you know, something like a, you know, like a Treehouse Julius that, that I've had too. And it's very similar to that. And um, it's, a, it's a, this is a great beer. This is fantastic. I'm glad I was able to get my hands on it, and uh, I'm glad I'm going to be able to join this for a little while. I don't know if you guys had this. I have. Yeah, I have um, not. I've had it at the brewery, and I've had it in cans. It's, it's a really good one. I was really happy to hear that you uh, were bringing that one in. Uh, Ellison, uh, in general, I haven't had a bad beer from Ellison. No, they, they've been fantastic. And apparently this was their first bottle released uh after they opened, I think it was on their anniversary party too, just reading a little bit into it. Um, this was probably two years ago now, but, uh, or a little less, but at least reading into it, that's what they, they released it as in a bomber. And it's nice to see they're offering in cans. You don't see it a lot and it gets scooped up pretty quickly. So you usually have to get to the uh, store, you know, as fast as you can to try to get, get some. And this was no exception. So, great offering so i'm really enjoying this one so yeah the good news is i'm starting to see these cans in more and more places when i was at zatuna liquor today uh up in rochester they had plenty of ellison on the shelf uh, of course that's up in oakland county for those of you familiar with the detroit area we're down in wayne county we don't, we don't see as much of it but uh yeah they're doing sure. a great job with uh and it looks like uh there's more and more cans being produced and available out in the marketplace so that's a great thing it's uh i really like their tap handles too it's got the uh i guess the state capitol building oh yeah 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 right it's a really cool looking tap handle so uh I, I yeah tell you what, doing some great things for a nine percent beer this thing drinks super easy i mean i it's hard to even tell that that there's nine percent alcohol in this thing and it's kind of dangerous, and <laughs> you know, certainly don't want to be you know hitting a couple of these things in one day. But you'll feel and be pretty good. But uh, yeah, this is great, fantastic stuff. Well, that's the one thing about these double IPAs; you don't need to be drinking. They're not sessionable. Two or three of them, and you're uh, feeling pretty good. Yes. Uh, we had an eight percent. Uh, we started with the Vizcai, which was eight, and uh, the Pop Slam was ten, and now yours is nine. So. You're pretty high up there on the Richter scale. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one more thing about Ellison is they have a great distillery, too. And if you ever go there on a Sunday morning, they have their their own vodka they produce. Uh, they have a Bloody Mary bar made with uh, Ellison vodka. So, uh, great place. So if you're in East Lansing, find these guys. Uh, they, they do some really good things, Ellison. Can't say kind enough good things about Ellison. Uh, they're kind of hidden, great, too. You almost have to... to you have to research them before you actually go up there because they're kind of hidden, but kind of off the beaten path a little bit. But uh, yeah, they're they're a great place to visit. So they always seem to be busy every time I was in there. So yep. yeah, they're right off like one of the main highways. I, I think they're right off of the M forty three highway, right? Yep, yep, right off of Grand River. Yep. And uh, yeah, Grand River, and then uh, it's just like a block off of the highway, but it's back in an industrial park. And I agree that it, it's challenging to find it the first time you go. I've been there about four times. Uh, anytime I go out to East Lansing, I'm, I'm looking these guys up and stopping by the tap room. Uh, I umpire softball out there once or twice a year, and I always make my way there uh, after, not before umpire. Uh, <laughs> well, make it that's it. I just saw game. two two balls. Which one was the ball and which one was the strike? <laughs> uh, All righty then. Well, we're at uh, about the half time of the show here. We've got uh, three more beers we're going to review, but uh, we're going to do our hipster tipster se- segment on uh, relevant craft beer news and articles. And the first article I want to refer to uh, on the Michigan Beer Guy Twitter, if you uh, want to book this one up, 
I'll simply say uh, it's an article that was, uh, made us all feel good. All the beer nuts are feeling good about this because the title of the article says, Drinking alcohol is more important than exercise for living past 90. So yes. apparently uh, studies show that uh, drinking in moderation, of course, that is probably the key, is uh, very beneficial to your health and can help you live long. Whereas uh, I think the one uh, excerpt from the article I remember when reading it, it's somebody said that you only have so many ticks left in that heart, so if you exercise too much, you're using them all up. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, hey, you know, hey, it's a feel-good article. If you enjoy drinking, uh, read it. It'll make you feel good. So you can look that one up uh, on our Twitter, Michigan Beer Guy Twitter, uh, posted a couple days ago. Uh, uh, also, I'm going to let Pete talk about the next news stories because Stroh's is dear, <laughs> near and dear to his heart. And oh, yeah. what do we find out about uh, plans down the road for Stroh's? Yeah, there's been a little bit of... Uh Headlines hitting the radar in the last week or so here in this area. Uh, as you know, Stroh's, who is owned by Pabst, uh, you know, it said this article had said that they had uh, got uh, federal label approval for a new session IPA called Perseverance. Uh, it's going to be around 4.5% ABV, and uh, they're going to brew it here in Detroit at the Brew Detroit uh, facility. Uh, they're a contract brewer, and they're down here in Corktown, you know, neighborhood in Detroit. And uh, nobody's really let out any details yet. Maybe they don't know. Uh, you know, they're not letting on when it's going to be released. But uh, it's being developed, apparently, and they did get the label approval for Perseverance Session at IPA. So I'm excited. I love the Stroh's Bohemian in particular. I'm not a huge Stroh's Lager fan or a Stroh's Pilsner fan. Uh, but I am a big fan of the Stroh's Bohemian just because it's got, you know, flavor and hops and malt. And I'm, I'm hoping that this uh, IPA uh, representative uh, will, will do good by them. I know I, I used to love the signature from Stroh's, which was one of my gateway beers back in the late 70s, early 80s. And uh, that, to me, had a great hop influence in it. And... Uh, you know, this might be a new a, a new break in for them. Obviously, the the market is flooded with all kinds of session IPAs. But hey, if you're a diehard Detroit fan, diehard Stroh's guy like me, I'm going to jump on this and give it a full tryout. Amen. We'll be looking forward to that one. Yeah. Uh, you can drink a few more of those than you can these double IPAs because it's a session. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a couple more articles quickly before uh, I'm sure Dan out in Missouri, uh, tired of hearing about all these great Michigan beers. He's got uh, something from his neck of the woods. But before we go there, just a brief mention of a couple more articles. Again, you can get all these on the Michigan Beer Guy Twitter, at Michigan Beer Guy. Uh, the one article, uh, uh, the headline is Craft Beer Tap Rooms Stealing Business from Bars. So the uh, assertion in the article is that traditional bars are being phased out because uh, today's hipsters would rather go to uh, the local brewery. Uh, there might be some truth to that in an area where there's competition for those. So uh, that's a, a nice read if you have a chance to uh, look that one up. And last but not least, uh, I wanted to bring, call attention to a, uh, a vote that we're having, uh, the 10best.com. You can go to 10best.com. There's a USA uh, Top 10 Best Beer's Choice uh, Award up for Best New Brewery in the country. And there's, uh, out of the 10 uh, breweries that are finalists, there are two from Michigan. So uh, Holmes Brewery in Ann Arbor, Michigan, which we really have to get some of their beers on the show, but uh, they sell out pretty quickly. They do some tremendous things, especially with their hockey IPAs. Um, Holmes Brewery in Ann Arbor is on there, so uh, Michigan Michiganders that have had their beers, please uh, feel free to go on and vote for them. And uh, another brewery that is you know, near and dear to me and uh, to the beer nuts, and that I think even Dan out in Missouri knows about and uh, enjoys is Speciation Artisan Ales, our good friend Mitch, uh, out in uh, Grand Rapids. Uh, he's doing great things with his, uh, you know, uh, Wild fermented uh, open fermentations, uh, uh, sour beers, 
Uh, and they are currently number eight. Holmes is number five. Uh, so these guys need votes. So all you Michiganders listen to the show. Uh, you know, if you have had these beers and enjoy them, please uh, log on to tenbest.com and cast your votes for support our Michigan breweries. So we're going to leave Michigan now, and we're going to turn it over to Dan out in Missouri. And uh, Dan, tell us uh, what you have to share with us today. All right. Well, I have uh, cash money, or money if you prefer. I don't know. But it's uh, it's obviously a play on kind of the, um, well, I don't know. The can art itself is a fist, a giant fist coming straight at you. It's covered in gold rings, and the cash, the cash is spelled with a dollar sign for the S, and money is just spelled M-O-N-Y. So, I think as this, uh, even as a white guy, I'm pretty sure it's cash <laughs> money. <clears throat> but uh, they're a, it's from a fun brewery in St. Louis called Four Hands. Um, they've gotten a little bit of a uh, name for themselves. Uh, probably back mainly behind Madagascar, which is a barrel-aged vanilla stout. But um, this is their double IPA. They do a couple of them, a couple of seasonal double IPAs. Another one is Warhammer. And uh, I prefer this one. This is my preferred double IPA from them. It is a dark, it's kind of like a hay, dark straw. I don't know what the next shade down. It's kind of a golden, dark dark golden color um it is not translucent it's not real clear it's a little hazy for sure not that that's the style they're going after but that, i think that's just kind of the way the beer is um just an off-white head retains for a little while some good lacing the aroma is just i'm on mute chop- i've been on mute yeah <laughs> no you're not we can hear you Sorry. We got you. <laughs> okay. uh, my mute button says mute. Take two. All right. He thought he was muted. How's Sorry, that now? I'm muted now. Edit that out. <laughs> so the the uh, nose is uh, just real citrus, tropical. Uh, maybe uh, the nose is actually a little melon. Maybe uh, honeydew-ish. And then uh, I'll take another sip here. Yeah, it's real... I think when you st- if you stick your nose in that first, very, very first bite of like a pineapple is what it is. Kind of the fleshy part that before you get into the real sweetness, because this is real dry, a little bitterness, and then kind of comes back around to some of that melon rounded out, more a rounded, sweeter. But it's not like sweet at all. It's really balanced. If you could say an IPA, it could be balanced in some sort of way. <laughs> um, um, it, it's a great, it's a great drinking IPA. They, they, when they first came out with this a few years ago, it was in Bombers, and um, I think the first year they made it, it was its best. They on their website, they don't really give any information about the hops. They just say we use a um, wasteful amount of hops in this beer, and you know the tasting notes are just pretty much all citrus. So. Um, the first year in Bombers, it was outstanding. It was amazing. It was six ninety nine for a twenty two ounce bomber, and then the second year, it was also in Bombers, and it was not as good. And like many, you know, small and regional breweries, it, you know, they struggle sometimes from year to year to get the best hops they can because there's big hop contracts and and all that that other end of the business that goes into it. But uh, this year. They came out with it in four pack cans. Um, it's at a reasonable price point. I don't remember how much I paid for this. Probably like ten or eleven bucks. And it's it's fantastic. It's much better than it was last year. Um, I, I've drank. This is my kind of like you guys in, in Hop Slam up there in Michigan. This is my third or fourth four pack from them of this beer. Um, if I don't see anything out new right now. I know that this is pretty fresh still. It's gotten a little bit of age. It's probably been out for a few weeks, but it's it's still fantastic, and I can get this at a few different spots around town. So, um, Four Hands, they're in St. Louis, which is a little bit of a uh, Midwestern beer mecca, just to pump them for a minute. If, you, if anybody's thinking about going through St. Louis, 
Um, I definitely recommend them, especially if you have kids. They have this uh, newer facility they've been at for over a year or so. They have two floors and like 20,000 square feet total, you know, brewing. And uh, they have a small restaurant there, a small kitchen that they lease out to somebody. And uh, upstairs on the second level, they have like arcade games that are, I think, free. Uh, there are some, you know, older arcade, arcade games and board games and huge tables and huge high ceilings. It's one of these big, huge buildings, you know, downtown, old, old buildings. And uh, it's just a really cool spot. Tons of, it's just windows all the way around. So the light comes in there like crazy. It's awesome. And then they might have food trucks outside in addition to their little kitchen. Um, but like I said, yeah, they're known for Madagascar, which I don't know, really know too many people that really care for vanilla stouts. Barrel aged stouts, you know they're they're kind of they're kind of drain pours, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> anyways, four hands in the cash money, it's delicious. Yeah, uh, four hands. I've had a lot of good beers from four hands, and Dan knows very well how much I uh, cherish that Madagascar. <laughs> I think I've had it once. So, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, uh, and other great beers have come from there. You know, light and dark. So. I would yeah. love to try Cash Money sometime. And uh, thanks for that great description of the brewery. That makes me want to come to St. Louis even more. Fortunately, that <laughs> is a destination that my wife has expressed great interest in visiting. So uh, this summer might be the the time. So I'll certainly be in touch with you on that, Dan, if we can get out in your neck of the woods and maybe meet up with some beer and uh, some food. And I'll have the family with me. So that sounds like as long as there's good food there, there's there's, you know, it's like, are you saying there's a chance? <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I say that, you know, if there's good food, uh, I can usually convince my family to endure a brewery visit with me. But if there's no food, I'm, I'm out of luck. So sounds like a great spot. Thanks for sharing that with us, Dan. Yeah, I, I wanted to do something here from Springfield, but um, they all have double IPAs, but nothing's really in season right now. Uh, White River releases theirs um, late summer or fall. And so that's out and, uh, mothers, they do their, um, doozy or super doozy, I think late spring or early, early summer kind of timetable. So couldn't get anything from them. And there's a couple of other newer, smaller guys, but I wasn't able to get over to them cause they're only growler, growler only. They don't have distribution. So had to suffer and get a St. Louis beer. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, man. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> All right, well, as long as we're on the train west, let's keep going west all the way to the pack northwest, because Chris has something from Oregon, I believe. Way out west. Yeah, I have uh, from, well, actually, I am in a city called Pendleton, Oregon, uh, which is about three hours away uh, from Portland, uh, but I had to go to a place called Forty Taps. Uh, because in Oregon, you apparently have to sell beer and one beer and wine in one place and liquor in another. It's one of those states. Uh, but I picked up something. I, it's uh, a double IPL. Oh, India Pale Lager. Yes. Uh, it's called uh, Cuke IPA. Uh, but yeah, it's an Imperial Pale Lager. So, but I sampled it. First of all, any part in a storm. It's the closest thing they had to double IPA. Uh, it's kind of a small town here. Uh, but second, I tried it. It was delicious. So I'm going to pour some now. Oh, I already said once today, uh, it's our show and we'll do what I want. <laughs> yeah. We'll do what we want. Uh, but, you know, I got hey, myself uh, a crawler like really of it. Here. Yeah. I got myself a crawler of it, by the way. I pour awesome. it. Nice golden color. Uh, you could see through it. Uh, uh, the aroma coming off of this is is quite something. Uh, you know, I mean, we're out west, so grapefruit, pineapple. Uh, but two something. You know, I I've, I've been looking online a lot for description of this. Can't even get one from the website of the of the own brewery. Um, but there's definitely kind of a a sweeter aroma to this than you're used to. Uh, the lacing on it is an, it's kind of, kind of like a, a nice creamy kind of lacing here. I'm going to go ahead and taste it. Oh man, man, that's good. It's a light crisp mouthfeel. 
and you're getting a lot of that grapefruit, a lot of that pineapple. You know, I don't, there's something that I just can't pin. It's kind of a, I just can't put my taste buds on. It's kind of a sweeter taste. You know, it's called cuke. I want to say it's cucumbers, but I don't know. It, this, I'm sure we've all had cucumber before. We've all seen, uh, you know, a, a, a fancier hotel where they have that out for you. But there's there's just something I can't pin on this. But this is a light, refreshing. This is a really good beer. Seven and a half percent ABV, uh, sixty five uh, IBUs. Uh, if you find yourself out west, uh, this this is on draft uh, at a number of bars out this way uh, in Oregon. But yeah, Fathead Brewery, Portland, Oregon, Cuke IPA. It's good stuff. And I, and I I'll try to pin that flavor by the end of the show. Um. Isn't Fatheads I, known I, for a certain IPA? Fatheads is actually an Ohio brewery, but I believe they opened up a Portland tap room. Hmm. Really? Um, and I I, yeah, there was a Cleveland up, coming up. And I don't believe this is an IPA the lager. They're uh, untapped. It says it's an IPA. Um, but I don't really have anything else to go on it. Uh, Rape uh, Beer's got a couple check-ins from Portland location, too, so maybe it's okay. just the... That side of the uh, the country there. Well, they make some. Uh, they're known for their IPAs. They do some great things. They do uh, hop juju is one that just came out. I think yeah. that's an imperial IPA. Um, yeah, they've got lots of good beer, it, So it's an imperial pale lager. Really? Yes. Hmm. It does. Oh, uh, well, untapped must be wrong, or uh, somebody's wrong. But hey, it's an imperial pale something, right? <laughs> Yes. As long as you're enjoying the beer, that's all that matters. And it sounds like you are. Absolutely. But yeah, that adds, uh, I believe, uh, in North Olmsted, Ohio. I actually went to the brewery uh, on my way back from Cleveland. I went to the 76ers Cavaliers game, took my son for his birthday. And uh, on the way back, of course, I had the entire family groaning as I ran inside, got a growler fill, and then immediately left, but I did get to and, uh, get a growler of uh, one of their other IPAs. I don't really remember which one I bought. But great uh, great IPAs from this brewery. Their website and says Middleburg. There seems to be a likeness of one of the beer nuts on the label. I think there's more than one location. I know they had one in Canton when we went to the Hall of Fame. It wasn't open yet, but it should be open any day now. Um, and then there's one in North Olmstead outside of Cleveland. That's the one I had stopped by. I have like three or four, uh, and now the, the Portland one. So, great brewery. Uh, they only distribute in Ohio, but you know we're only a hop, skip, and a jump from Toledo uh, in southern Michigan. So, I've uh, been able to sneak down there and get some of these uh, great beers. And uh, isn't that the beer that uh, has you on the label, Uncle Pete? That's what I was alluding to. There's a likeness of one of the beer nuts on the label. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> if you look on the label, uh, Uncle Pete is prominently so figured. So I've heard. You should probably be, you should yeah, probably, uh, I wouldn't say sue for infringement, but at least uh, negotiate some free beer out of the deal because <laughs> I'm using your likeness. <laughs> Maybe I'll walk in down there and see what happens. If it's quiet, nothing happens, well then, no, no harm done. Say, so, hey, I'm on the label. Do I really have to pay for this? <laughs> Well, all right. Well, I'm glad that you were able to find something, and I'm really happy you were able to join us. And we do have little congratulations in order for Chris, because he's recently engaged. So congratulations, oh, brother. Welcome. Yes, thank you. So we welcome you to the club. Um, those of us, I think, but most of us, if not all of us on the show, are... Guys are off quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the nagging only starts after about year three, so you got a couple of years. <laughs> Good to know. So, all right. Well, uh, congratulations that. on that, and uh, Thank you. we we are going to uh, wrap up the show with one final offering, which I saved uh, the best name certainly of all the beers we've had tonight um, for a beer that I really really enjoy, and fortunately just came out with a brand new fresh batch, and this is from Rope Brewing. One of the all-time greatest beer names ever. It's called Blow Your Face Out, handcrafted double IPA. So I'm going to read from the label before I even review it. Rope's Blow Your Face Out double IPA was crafted to maximize the dank character of hops with piney, tropical, and stone fruit aromas 
and flavors with over 100 IBUs. These hops are ready to explode right out of the bottle. So grab a glass. This beer is going to blow your face out. Brewed in Royal Oak, Michigan. So this is going to be our grand finale. Uh, Pete and I had one over the weekend, and uh, we enjoyed that, and I'm sure we'll enjoy this one. But I've been talking enough tonight. I'm going to let Pete lead this off and give us a little All right. review. So, Pete, I'll let you take All right. point on this one. Blow Your Face Out reminds me of that live album from Jay Giles way back in the day. There you go, JR. Now, I love the I love the label on this one as well, just like the... Am I on? Sorry. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah you <laughs> okay. are. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, I love the label on this one as well. It's uh, very uh, predominantly uh, hop-centric. Definitely a uh, face of a gentleman on there who's... Face is just blowing hops out like crazy. So, but I just poured this in a small sampling glass, and I'm telling you, the aroma has enveloped my area over here in this corner of the room. <laughs> it's very fresh, right? This came out what in the last week or two yeah. here. I think it's been, it was released like a couple weeks, two ago. weeks ago, maybe. Yeah. So yeah, it's fresh. Pop the top here, and it's really uh, smelling up the room. Mm, love it. It's like perfume. I think the best adjective to this is dank. I mean, it's danky. Chris, if you were here, you would probably want to put this on one of your other podcasts. It's got that dank yeah. 420 smell to it. Absolutely. That's a for sure. I figured you guys oh, would go down there. I love it. I can just sit here and smell that instead of drinking it. Mm. You know, I am in Oregon. That's a very familiar smell out here as well. I'm sure. It is very dank tasting. I mean, it's very um, bitter, very strong. I immediately uh, drying up the, your tongue. And, I mean, it's, uh, I don't know what the ABV is on this. I'm not getting, a, I'm getting a little heat, not much. But it may be just be the strength of the hops forcing that bitterness right off the bat because I'm not getting, a, you know, a malt base that this is based on. This is just a pure hop bomb right here. Untap says it's ten and a half percent. Ten and a half. Okay, well, it could be some of the warmth I'm getting there because it's definitely warmer than the hop slam I had, and it's definitely bolder than the hop slam I had. So it's got a hundred hundred IBUs too. It says too. So, wow. Yeah, it's a biggie. So <laughs> it's not balanced really in any way. It's just a full in your face, blow your face out. Hop, hop. Well, those of us who followed the evolution of the IPA style and the popularity of the New England Juicy Hazy, this is the style that was prevalent before those juice bombs came out. This is the, uh, the you know, let's pack as much hops as we can, punch you in the face, and get that piney, danky, tropical, you know, resiny. Um, it's, it's a hop bomb to the third degree. Uh, I, love the, I love this beer. I, I really enjoy it. It's great to have a fresh batch of it. You know, it's, it's still like real pungent. Uh, I love the aroma on it. I love the flavor of it. Uh, all I can say is uh, buy this if you find it. It's you will not be disappointed. It, I guess uh, when we were talking earlier about how approachable the uh, this guy was, that anybody could drink this. This is not for the novice no. IPA drinker. You have to really like your hops. Um, but if you do, you'll be really, really impressed with it. It's, it's just a hot bomb. It's not for the weak. It's <laughs> hardcore. Blow your face out. It's blowing my face out, but I'm embracing it. I'm embracing it, too. I love it. Has anyone else had this? Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, I'll I have to definitely pick up some more. I it sounds like I'm going to. Up now because it's nice and fresh. Uh, uh, I found uh, all the Krogers in my area have plenty of it. Um, and you know, any good party store will have it too. As, as Zatuna's had it today, so uh, seek it out. It's it's out right now. You know, I'm sure a month from now we probably won't be able to get it, and the hops will be starting to fade. So uh, seek this out, Michiganders. You know, go get it, man, because it's it's drinking really really well. But again, if you're uh, if you're on the fence about IPAs or maybe. Uh, uh, this may not be for everybody, but uh, if you're an IPA drinker, go get it. Great job, Rope Brewing. I agree. Mm-hmm. All right, well, anybody have any final comments, or are we ready to go to Mexico? We've been uh, from Michigan 
to Missouri, to Oregon, and all the way back to yeah. Michigan. So I guess now the next stop is Mexico City. <laughs> so thank you all for uh, joining us. Uh, Chris, you want to give the traditional uh, tweet us out and uh, follow us here, follow us there. Yeah, on Twitter, at Beer Nuts Podcast. On Instagram, at Beer Nuts Podcast. Email the show, Beer Nuts Podcast, at ChristopherMedia.net. Also, it's a podcast, so the way you help people find out about it is go to ChristopherMedia.net, click on Leave a Review. It'll take you to our provider page on iTunes, and you can rate us and review us there. And wherever you listen to us, if you can rate us and review us, please do so. Share us on Facebook, all that fun stuff. So, JR, let's go to Mexico. Okay, before we do that, I just want to invite anybody uh, anybody from like Southern California. We'd love to have somebody from Southern California join us for a show. So, uh, if you're listening and you either are in Southern California or know someone there, tweet us out and we'll invite you to join us as a beer now. So, we're recruiting. So, as they say at Old Mexico City, AMF. If you like this show, please tell a friend. Please follow us on Twitter and like and share us on Facebook by searching for Christopher Media. You can subscribe to all ChristopherMedia.net shows for free on ChristopherMedia.net. Please make sure to rate and comment on all your favorite Christopher Media shows. Thank you in advance for supporting Christopher Media by clicking on the PayPal button and by clicking through to all the sponsors who support ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. And thank you for listening. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Do it yourself doesn't have to mean all by yourself. Help is as close as HomeDepot.com slash workshops. Now with free DIY live stream workshops, live hands-on courses from real expert associates. Learn how to install floor tile, create a tile backsplash, replace a thermostat, and more. All from the best seat in the house, yours. To register, go to HomeDepot.com slash workshops. Only from the Home Depot. How doers get more done. Pro Extra is the Home Depot's free loyalty program built for pros. Members earn perks just for shopping, like new Pro Extra dollars or tool rental perks. Get exclusive benefits every day that save time and money. And here's an extra extra, $20 off your next in-store purchase of $200 or more just for signing up. Want to save? Join Pro Extra only at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. Visit the Pro Desk in-store at homedepot.com slash pro extra for details.